how our governments came into possession of UFO material. In the years 1946 to 1953 in your time scale, there were five cases where extraterrestrial ships crashed into the surface of the Earth. In that crash which you call the Roswell incident, there was not only one alien ship involved but two that crashed after a collision in. You have to know that the ships of this particular species can remain levitating in the air for a particular period of time even though they are damaged. Another ship crashed in 1946, but it was destroyed beyond usability. It certainly sounds ridiculous to you that such highly developed extraterrestrial ships simply crash, and that a relatively large number did so in a relatively short amount of time. The explanation for that is likewise more than strange, but it is correct. It does not lie in the ship's drive itself, but rather in the direction of the field to your planet. This species that we are discussing and it was always in this time period that this species used a disc-shaped craft, used a propulsion system that ran according to the normal principle of fusion, to be sure, but one that at that time employed a more than an unconventional method for field alignment. This method had various advantages but also disadvantages. The repelling field must of course lie at the absolute correct angle to the surface of the Earth. This species used an alignment technology in their ships, with which the field locked into place all points of the Earth's magnetic field. Now at that time this species had just arrived on the Earth and their point of origin lay on a planet with a more stable magnetic field, for which they had developed and aligned their drive. The magnetic field of the Earth is not really all that stable, it is subject to cyclical variations and it forms field deities under unfavorable conditions. Whenever a ship with one of those kinds of drives gets into a field fluctuation or into an eddy that is too strong, then for a short time the repelling field can no longer align itself correctly and the ship glides uncontrolled on its flight path. The drive is operating correctly, to be sure but the field fluctuates in all directions and because of that, the ship can crash. In the case from 1947 which you addressed, it is my understanding that one of the ships got caught in a fluctuation, its field linked up unintentionally with that of its squadron leader and it collided with another ship whereby both of them were heavily damaged. The cause for the magnetic fluctuation at that time was probably an electrical disturbance brought about by a weather event. Both ships crashed as a result, your human military collected the individual pieces immediately they classified everything as top secret and brought them to their military bases in order to analyze the drive. I don't want to specify exactly your date, that it was probably between 1949 and 1952 that there was a rather bad accident during some research being done on one of the wrecks. According to what I heard, what members of my species were told by members of that government, it resulted in an unintentional activation of one of the drive's components in the unshielded condition. As a result, for a very short period of time, there was an unchecked shift of the environment to a plasma-like condition, which on the other hand, through a very, very unfortunate accident, caused an overturning of the general power field into a magnetic pulse of immense power. I think that 20 or 30 of your scientists were killed in that lab. Two further crashes occurred in 1950 and 1953 in the water catchment area of the American continent. Those ships were able to be recovered from the crashes relatively intact. The one in 1953, as I remember, even had an intact drive core. It was by means of that device that you saw for the first time that you had understood the entire concept fully incorrectly and that you had reconstructed it fully incorrectly, even today you still don't have it right, that species, which had built the ships in the first place a species which I held among those who were unfriendly towards you, was naturally worried about the investigation of their own technology by your kind they did not want at that early point in time to begin direct conflict with you, and so they chose the diplomatic path and came into contact with that government during your 1960s. Of course, they did not divulge the real reasons for their being here copper, hydrogen, but rather they pretended to be curious researchers and offered to show people the functioning principle of the ships whereby they would expect in return some favors. Simple-minded as you are, 
you of course agreed to it but were deceived. You gave them raw materials, you gave them secured locations for their bases, you gave them access to your most secret defense data, you gave them access to your DNA, and much more, and all just to quench your greed for power and information. The alien species of course quickly noticed that they were dealing with simple-minded creatures, and they gave you false and inferior information about their technology so that they receive much more out of the collaboration than your kind do. For example, they gave you information that the drive can only be constructed with unstable elements of a higher ranking number, but they withheld the information that the field drive can be constructed with various modifications to work as well with stable elements of a lower periodic number, and generally, that's the way it's done. They made you dependent on the synthesizing of high-numbered elements and thereby renewed by their own technology. Their clues to the construction of your UFOs were laid out in such a way that the solution to old problems caused new problems to arise simultaneously. They never told you the complete truth, but always built in, again and again, clever lies, which later lead to technical problems and to your dependence on them. In the last years of your 1970s and your early 1980s, it finally came down to various events between the alien species and that human government. The whole thing lay in the context with some new, or better said, the old technical problems with your own self-constructed ships whose camouflage and drive partially failed to function in test flights in the open. Because of that, the function of secrecy was threatened. Your military and your politicians slowly, very slowly, came to the conclusion after more than 20 years of this that they had been deceived by that alien species. Multitudinous incongruities and the overstepping of bounds of the treaties by both sides finally led to an altercation between you and the extraterrestrials, which culminated in the lift-off of three of the alien aerial objects through a special electromagnetic pulse, weapon and a military skirmish at one of their underground installations. As a consequence of these attacks, the alien species ultimately withdrew from all contact with you and was understandably more than angered about your kind. Therefore, I count these extraterrestrials among the three groups who are hostile toward you, and while the other two are more occupied with their own business, among them waging a cold war for dominance on your planet, your old friends and partners are preparing to supply themselves finally with the soul and absolute dominance over raw materials and human DNA. At the moment it is probably true that they lack some of the technical possibilities and the large amount of force that they need in order to achieve their goals directly. In spite of that, we are counting on negative actions possibly ever of a more subtle kind, against you in the next few years or decade.